Welcome to Full Circle. I'm Suzanne McAllister. I'm so glad that you could be with us today. We have a terrific show lined up for you. You know, recently I had the opportunity to get a behind the scenes look at a new international orangutan center that's going to be at the Indianapolis Zoo. And that is what we are talking about on today's program. It is my extra special pleasure to introduce our first guest from the Indianapolis Zoo, Dr. Rob Shoemaker. Dr. Shoemaker is an evolutionary biologist who specializes specializes in the study of behavior and cognition in animals. He started his career at the Smithsonian National Zoo as a volunteer, went on to work for 20 years as an animal keeper, a curator, a biologist, an exhibit designer, and scientist. <laughs> you love working around animals. I love it, and I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity, and uh, it continues here today at the Indianapolis Zoo. Absolutely, and you are now the Vice President of Conservation and Life Sciences, as you said, at the Indianapolis Zoo. Let's, let's talk about that conservation sure. piece, because I think a lot of people don't think of zoos and conservation all in the same place. Oh, I think you're right about that, and I'm happy that that's something that's changing. I'm happy both for zoos, and I'm happy for the animals that are benefiting from that. If you look back at zoos historically, zoos have always justified themselves in different ways. And I think what we've really settled on as a modern concept for zoos is that we're centers for education, centers for science, centers for conservation, and of course we're centers for recreation for our visitors as well. Um, but the mission of the Indianapolis Zoo is very clear. The zoo empowers people and communities, locally and globally, to advance animal conservation. That's our mission. And what a fabulous mission. So tell me how that plays into this incredible new effort to uh, show the orangutans in an entirely different kind of center. Well, I think you've asked a wonderful question. The, the idea is based on the fact that orangutans in the wild are in serious trouble. Um, predictions vary. But it's fair to say that this could be the last generation of wild orangutans. Wow. And we're not willing to sit by while that continues to happen. So we're joining with all of our colleagues around the world who are making an incredible effort to try and save magnificent orangutans in the wild. So our exhibit is purely and simply about helping to conserve wild orangutans. Now, of course, part of that is providing a spectacular home for the orangutans um, that live at the Indianapolis Zoo, educating our visitors and so on. Um, but at the end of the day, our goal is to benefit wild orangutans through all of our efforts associated with the International Orangutan Center. So let's talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, uh, reforestation in yes. Indonesia. Yes. How, how does all of that play into this effort? Well, I think the most important thing that a zoo can do uh, when a visitor comes, and we have over a million visitors a year, those are a lot of people, um, we want to engage those people in a very meaningful way. Um, we want to enlighten them to the challenges and problems facing wildlife, and then we want to empower them to make a positive change. We, we hope that that experience will compel them to do something positive for conservation. So at the International Orangutan Center, our goal is simply to change the hearts and minds of people. If they're not interested in orangutans, we want them to become interested. If they have some interest, we want to make it greater. Uh, and the, the most uh, significant thing that a person can do on site, right in the exhibit, when they're there, after they've learned all of these important things about orangutans and become invested in them, they can make um, a, a donation right there on site through specially designed kiosks um, that goes directly to reforestation efforts in Indonesia that are benefiting orangutans. And why is that so important? Give us a sense of uh, the orangutans' natural habitat and what's happening to it. Right. Orangutans in the wild are uh, a forest living creature. They must live in really good, productive, stable habitat if they will persist. Uh, and what that really means is good forest. Well, the biggest challenge facing orangutans in the wild, wherever they occur, is loss of habitat. And that can be for different reasons, but the primary reason is conversion for agriculture. And so when that habitat is lost, the orangutans are displaced, and frankly, most of them just die. 
Uh, and sometimes that's directly through conflict with people. Other times it's indirect through starvation or disease. So our main purpose is assisting in reforesting and rehabilitating degraded habitat or habitat that's been lost entirely. And we're doing that on the ground and we're doing that in partnership with the Indonesian government. So we work with the Ministry of Forestry in Indonesia uh, to move this effort forward. So when we talk about the international center, it really is that international effort. Absolutely, we have already been partnering with folks on the ground in Indonesia, and we've already sponsored a workshop in Indonesia on this topic, and we're regularly engaged with the Ministry of Forestry in Indonesia. Well, we are going to take a break, but when we come back, I want to start to talk about the wonderful orangutans that will be at the Indianapolis Zoo. And our guest, Dr. Rob Shoemaker, has been working with one of the orangutans, AZ, for almost 30 years. Stay with us. Welcome back to Full Circle. I'm continuing my conversation with Dr. Rob Shoemaker. He is a Vice President of Conservation and Life Sciences at the Indianapolis Zoo. We're talking about the International Orangutan, and it is Orangutan Center at the zoo. You have worked with AZ for about 30 years. Tell me about him. Um, what, what is he like? How smart is he? Sure. What does he eat? Sure. Well, you're right. Uh, AZ is a male orangutan. Uh, that I met when he was um, able to sit on my lap. That's oh. how small he was. Uh, and now he outweighs me by about 100 pounds. So uh, he's a full adult male orangutan whose appearance is magnificent. He's beautiful, um, um, a wonderful example of what a fully mature, very macho looking orangutan looks like. Um, and that's just not my opinion. All the female orangutans think he's quite wonderful. Um, and uh, it, it's been quite a privilege for me to be able to have a relationship for him for all of my adult life at this point. It started actually when I was re really um, in high school. That's incredible. And so I've been able to think of him as a friend and a partner uh, in the research that we conduct um, uh, for now a little bit over 30 years. So I would have to think in your studies with behavior and cognition that you do know that there is a real bond there with AZ. Are you ever concerned that you would leave Indianapolis and AZ would be left behind? And I mean, you look at the faces of those uh, orangutans and you feel like you're looking at a person. Yeah. Well. Uh, to answer your, your one question very directly, I have no intentions of leaving because Good. you're right. We, uh, um, uh, I, like, I like being where he is, and that's a great thing. Uh, and um, you know, here, here's the thing. It's very uncommon for someone to have the ability to work with the same great ape for that length of time and, and, and continuing. Uh, so it's very unusual, and, and I would say what it really does is, is it informs me about the abilities of orangutans known uh, through one individual extensively and through others with less information. But when I say that, the, one of our other orangutans named Kenobi, I've worked with for 10 years. So it, it still, that seems short by comparison, but it's a very long time. Um, so it really does inform me and compel me to care deeply about orangutans. And that's part of what we're so excited to share with people. Even if it's just a glimpse or, or a visit one time or more, um, we want to portray that and offer people that opportunity to know orangutans as individuals because it's very compelling and very persuasive. And this uh, particular center is not uh, common in terms of zoos um, because right. the, the primates will have the opportunity to really roam. Ta talk That's a right. little bit about that and why it's so important. Well, we're, we're investing very, very heavily in orangutans. Um, uh, there are about 200 orangutans in the United States uh, in uh, accredited zoos and 
Uh, most of them have a relatively small number of orangutans. We're hoping over time we may have a dozen or more. Um, that's quite a lot for one zoo to have. And what we're interested in doing is emphasizing three things. Number one, as you mentioned, that orangutans can make social choices. And what that means is travel. They need to be able to go from one place to the next and decide who they want to be with or maybe they want to be with nobody that day and that's okay. So travel is one. We want the place that they live to work very well for the way their bodies move. And that means being able to move and climb using their upper body strength like they would in the forest and being able to go to very tall heights. In our facility, the tallest area is approaching about 100 feet off the ground. And that's incredible. Uh, yeah, it is. And then the third thing is we want orang our orangutans to have the ability to learn and problem solve and have a very enriched mental environment every single day um, exactly as they have in the wild, meaning constant challenges, constant opportunities to put their intellect to work. They are natural born problem solvers with great persistence and we want them to be able to do that uh, in the place that they live at the Indianapolis Zoo. In fact, one of your books talks about how um, uh, the primates use tools. That's right. So you've probably observed that. That's right. Oh, tool using with orangutans is a very common thing. They both manufacture tools and make tools. And in fact, uh, chimpanzees and orangutans have the greatest diversity of types of tool use of all animals except humans. So, and this may be a difficult question, but what has surprised you the most about your uh, experience with the orangutans? Well, it's a wonderful question. I, I think what has surprised me the most, and, and it, it, this is actually about me, what surprised me most is I would make predictions about orangutans and their abilities based on their personalities or how sociable they were and so on. Um, and I was surprised at how often I was completely wrong, where an individual that might be um, very uh, smart socially or very outgoing or have a very um, um, confident personality, in my mind that would translate into, well, they must do very well when we get into some of these cognitive tasks sure. uh, or a testing situation. And in fact, that really isn't the case uh, at all. Um, so it's very, very hard for me to predict how any individual will do on a task until they get the chance to learn it and try it. Um, and that was a little bit humbling, but also a wonderful realization um, that I need to let them have a chance before I start forming any opinions about it. And that's good to know in terms of with our people perceptions as it well. It is. It's a great <laughs> reminder. A good lesson. Well, we are going to take another break, but we have lots more to cover after this. when May 2014 rolls around that you put the Indianapolis Zoo on your to-do list because the International Orangutan Center will be something that will delight. We're continuing our conversation with Dr. Rob Shoemaker and joining us now we have Carla Knapp. Carla is a public relations specialist with the zoo. Welcome. Thank you. You've got to be so excited about this exhibit. So please tell me, and it's not really an exhibit, it's a center. Uh, tell me about some of the things that your visitors will be able to experience. Well, this is going to be a totally innovative exhibit like nothing else that has ever been seen before anywhere in the world, really. There are so many different interactive elements, um, cognitive functions, skills, where humans can work together with orangutans. It's, it's going to be incredible, and we hope that guests will really connect and discover uh, unique interests that they didn't even know that they had. 
and they'll actually be able to go up above this uh, center and look down. How will that uh, play out in terms of the visitor experience? Sure, um, we have a unique skyline feature that's going to take guests up and above the exhibit uh, to really get a bird's eye view or an orangutan's eye view, if you will. Um, one of the most unique functions of this exhibit is uh, an opportunity for the orangutans to choose where they were they where they will go uh, in the exhibit in a feature called the Hutan Trail, and that is a functional forest that takes orangutans up into the sky to move around as they would in their native habitats. So the Skyline Ride will offer our human guests an opportunity to see eye to eye in a totally unique way that they would never be able to experience any other place. So Dr. Schumacher, are you at all worried that the orangutans will wonder what's going on since you are so close to, to them and, and their behavior and, and their um, cognition in, in terms of their surroundings? Well, I don't worry at all, although I think you're absolutely right that this will be quite interesting and engaging for them. Uh, but you know, in the wild, orangutans live in a very complex environment with a lot of things going on, a lot of activities. In some forests, there are tigers below, or elephants below, or m massive hornbills flying by at eye level. So I think actually activity and complexity is a wonderful thing for orangutans, something that makes their life that much more enjoyable and interesting. Oh, that's good to know. I'm glad I asked the question. All of this takes money. I know you had a $30 million goal. How can people continue to support this effort? Sure. Uh, the people of Central Indiana have been tremendously supportive of us, of us to this point. Um, we're almost to our goal, and it really shows the level of engagement and excitement about the International Orangutan Center. Um, we, like you said, uh, our goal is $30 million, and we're not quite there yet, so we have some opportunities. If you go to our website, you can find some additional information about the ways that you can become involved, really take ownership, and uh, help to make this exhibit a reality. Well, and part uh, another thing we can do is get the book that you had written that's been uh, that has been republished uh, briefly before we run out of time. Why is uh, that an important piece to to you in terms of getting information out? Well, thanks. It's a book called Orangutans being re-released, and it's the second edition. Um, it it really talks about orangutans and the nature of orangutans, and it's a wonderful primer on the natural history of these wonderful great apes. All right, and briefly, when can we experience all this, Carla? This is opening Memorial Day weekend, May of 2014, and you, you really should mark your calendars. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. Well, I can tell you, my one visit, I am already hooked, and I am just so thankful that you have been on the program, Dr. Rob Shoemaker and Carla Knapp of the Indianapolis Zoo. Be sure to visit the International Orangutan Center. We'll see you after the break. Stay with us. Musical Showcase is brought to you by Flanner and Buchanan, helping families tell the story of their loved one's life. Musical Showcase is brought to you by Flanner and Buchanan, helping families tell the story of their loved one's life. Well, I'm sure you will be as intrigued with the orangutans at the Indianapolis Zoo as I was when I visited them. The website is up on the screen to get more information about the new center. Well, this is our music segment, and it's always a pleasure to introduce our singers. We have Sister Act, Alana Story, and they're going to perform Providence. And we'll see you next time, Full Circle. We've done well for ourselves Working the nine to fives in factory lines Our world of tinsel and glitter It dazzles the eye while blinding the divine But oh, does anybody care that providence is all there somewhere waiting to be found so lift your eyes from your shiny times and look 
Medicine and machines cannot heal the hurting when we've ignored the healer and all the wisdom written and spoken. It cannot fix the broken. No, we need a great redeemer. Yeah. We try to do it all alone, convince ourselves to save the soul. Of our God, our selfish souls will soon dissolve while we likely decorate the very world He came to save. Does anybody care that providence is out there somewhere waiting to be found? So Closed captioning provided by Hear Hear. Hear Hear, discreet hearing solutions at affordable prices. 317-731-5386.